Hello, within this part we will focus on tickless mode within FreeRTOS and CMC's OS version 2 layer, but uh, within this part we will focus on stop low power modes usage, which is not a default setup provided by FreeRTOS, you need some more code modification to be inserted in inside uh, generated code. So for this uh, exercise I would use the following setup. Nucleo L476RG. This is this white board you which you can see on the screen. Then uh, it would be uh, supplied by uh, X Nucleo LPM01 board, which is the regulated power supply, which is uh, sending the data about the current delivered to the target board via virtual COM port, and it can be displayed on Cube Monitor Power application. Both boards are connected by two wires, which you can see on the screen. On LP on X Nucleo board, uh, it is a white connector marked CN14, and I'm using pins 1 and the third one, counting from the glass LCD. The first pin is a GND, and the third pin is a plus voltage. This plus voltage is connected to JP6 connector, uh, so I remove the jumper and I connect this red jumper to the left pin of this connector and uh, the black one is connected to any of GND pins on the Nucleo board. Both boards are connected as well to the PC using USB cables, so I need micro USB cable for X Nucleo board, the, the power measurement board. And I need mini USB cable for my Nucleo L476RG board. OK, I start new project using uh, STM32Cube IDE. You can use as well CubeMX with your preferred toolchain to do this. Uh, so I go to File, New, STM32 Project. I select L476RG microcontroller. I press next. Name of this exercise would be in my case 13 underscore tickless underscore stop. Press finish. I will use the same hardware setup like uh, in case of previous exercise, so tickless uh, sleep. And uh, I would perform all of the steps one by one quite fast, so in case you would like to have more information, more, more comments, please refer to the video which is describing this tickless sleep mode usage. OK, first point is enabling the debug interface within system core and sys. I select as a debug trace other asynchronous SW, which would be used to program the micro. You run the debug session and have single wire trace. Within this sys, I'm changing the time base source from sysTick to timer6, as sysTick is used by operating system. I would need LSE crystal, which is connected on my Nucleo board. It will be used to give the clock to our low power timer 1. Then within timers, I'm selecting low power timer 1. I select it, uh, configure it as, let's say, counts internal clock events. I enable its interrupt and within part, so it's in NVIC settings. And within parameter settings, I'm just changing only the prescaler to have 1 kHz on its input. So I use the divider 32. And uh, to finalize this, I go to clock configuration. I can see that I'm still working on 4 MHz complete system. But below, I can see that low power timer 1 is clocked by the peripheral clock 4 MHz. I would change it to LSC 32 kHz. And now, if I come back to pinout and configuration, I can see that using this prescaler, I will have 1 kilohertz on my, let's say, low power timer 1 input as a clock. OK, then it's time to configure the middleware, so free RTS. So I go middleware. I need to scroll it down somehow. So middleware, free RTS. I'm selecting interface CMC's V2. From this, I need to enable the tickless mode. So this is your stickless idle. I'm selecting built-in functionality enabled to have code generated, which would modify. Then within tasks and queues, I would rename this default task into task one. Priority normal I would keep 256 words as uh, let's say stack size and start task one as um, let's say entry functions. So that's it. I can generate the code.
Okay, I open main.c file, it's in the core source main.c and I can perform some code modifications. Within main.c I would start with my sign of life function, so um, first I declare the prototype, void uh, task underscore action her message, then I would define this function bit below with an user code then call user code for here I, um, I will use uh, ITM interface to send the data so ITM send send char and I would select message that's it and I would send a sign of new line That's it, my sign of life function is done. Then the task one body function. So first I would send my task for five seconds into the blocked state to give the space for the idle task and the tickless mode. Then I would, after let's say wake up, I would, uh, would like to have some sign of life. This is why I would like to send one over the ITM data console. And I would like to keep this task for half a second within the run or at least ready state to not go into the blocked state. That's it for main.c file. Now it's time to prepare our tickless mode and uh, to prepare the system to work after tickless mode. For this I would need this handler which we will reuse within freertos.c file which contains those uh, functions press sleep processing and post sleep processing uh, which are used uh, which are used to prepare our system to low power mode and to prepare it to work after low power mode. So we need this extern to use it uh, within those two functions. So the first thing uh, to prepare the system to work with low power modes is to stop our tick timer, so timer 6 in our case. Suspend tick, there is no arguments here. And then the second argument would be call low power timeout function so to let's say configure our low power timer to wake up us uh, on expected let's say timeout which is given by this argument within this presley processing function so low power timeout timeout uh, start it this is our handler maximum period we will use this is auto reload register of low power timer one which is 16 bit and here we would like to send this argument from the function even let's say after we will wake up from low power mode we need to perform those operations in the reverse order so first we would like to stop low power timer one Of course, there is there are no more arguments than uh, this handler, and the uh, next thing is to resume the timer six, and that's it. So we are done with the basic code processing. This is now if we compile the code, run a start a debug session, we will have the situation that we are working with sleep mode. But the goal of this session is to perform some modifications within port.c file to use stop modes instead of the sleep. So let's continue with code processing. Now we will switch to port.c file. Okay, port.c file can be found with a uh, middleware's third party freer DOS source portable GCC and ARM C Cortex M4. So CM4F port.c. This is it. And uh, we are looking for the main function which is responsible for the service of this tickless mode. So I use the control F. And then I press V port suppress. So I can just put sup sup. That's it. And you can see this is in my case starting from line 508. And uh, within this function, we need to perform few modifications. So let's say the first one is to uh, let's say restart of the SysTick. So we should go over here and we need to block this line in my case it is 571 
to not restart assistic because it will let's say wake up us uh, from this from the stop mode we need to let's say complete stop then we will replace this wfi instruction so the classical entrance to the sleep mode with um, entrance to st stop mode so hal pwr ex because this is typical for the l4 and extended version so then enter stop one mode and then uh, we need to enter somehow and uh, we will enter with wfi the argument for this is uh, pwr stop and three wfi so we would like to go here by uh, wfi inst by interrupt if you are not sure about the argument you can always go to the function body and you see the arguments here so we will enter stop mode with, with let's say wfi instruction so in fact if you go if we see uh, let's say here it will be an extension of let's say previous previous call in previous call we've got only this wfi so if we just call this function the let's say that the micro will stop go to execution and it is classical sleep mode but if we enable deep sleep or sleep deep let's say bit within the cortex system control register it means that uh, it, it is the sign uh, for cortex m core that uh, we would like to stop all of the high frequency clocks and enter into classical stop mode this is our case okay so let's come back to our port uh, c file and uh, let's say we need to verify one more thing so i scroll it up at the at the top and i need to include the main.h file as well mm, over here to have an access to all of the components from the main code okay that's all modifications we need to perform at the moment if we scroll down once again to this line 570 we can see that we are entering into stop mode we can replace it we will do it a bit later on with stop 2 and check the difference uh, so at the moment i'm building the code so i press the hammer icon Okay, no errors, no warnings, we can start a debug session. Okay, let's start a debug session. This guy I've got already connected Nucleo board with X Nucleo LPM01 by those red and black wires. So red wire is connected between CN14 on the blue board and the left pin of JP6 on Nucleo board. This is the plus and the GND is connected as well CN14 uh, on X Nucleo LPC and it is connected uh, so pin 1 on this and then GND on Nucleo board both boards are connected as well to PC using USB cables micro USB cable X Nucleo LPM01 and mini USB cable Nucleo L476 RG I can start a debug session but before this uh, as we will use low power mode uh, stop it is good to disable all components which could affect our current consumption so i would go to click on this arrow click go to debug configuration and uh, then i will go to the debugger i will not enable this serial wire viewer in this case and i would disable the debug in low power modes so i just click debug okay there is an error because we need to enable power supply for our to our board so i run cube monitor power i select the board it is count when the first i take control then i set the sampling frequency to the highest possible acquisition time to infinite and i start acquisition after this i will try once again to start the debug okay and when it is done i just started and stop just not to cause any additional current consumption let's have a look on the cube monitor power so 
I would just stop one of the sequences. So stop. And I can see right now, five seconds total, I will say stop time. In between I can see this wake up caused by overflow of uh, cystic, so after 4194 milliseconds. And then I can see, let's say, this remaining part of five seconds, then wake up for task one for half a second. If we check now the current consumption, I can just select part of it and zoom it. So the current consumption in stop one is more or less on the level between seven and a half uh, up to maximum 17 in some peaks, milli microamperes. Uh, average it is more or less eight, that's something microamperes. So it's this is the result for stop one. I can start acquisition once again just to give the power to the board. And I can do some uh, corrections to use stop 2 instead. If I go to port C, I can just replace this stop 1 into stop 2 and rebuild the code once again. So just to remind you, this is I'm in, inside the function port.c file function po v port suppress ticks and slip. Line in my case it is 585. OK, code is compiled. I can start a debugger. Resume and stop. Okay, it, is, it is working. I would stop to complete sequences. Let me wait a bit. To complete sequences, now I can zoom the area of stop, and I can see that current consumption is much lower. It's let's say more or less two microamperes within stop two. So the result is uh, like uh, let's say we expected. Now we need a yes, it is auto let's say scaling to the to the result. So the result is like expected. Uh, of course, you can change let's say the your task action function from SWO to LED blinking and observe the difference. So that's it for this exercise. In next one we will add the, the semaphore usage uh, to wake up the system before this maximum timeout will be done. So thank you for watching this video.